G'day guys, welcome back to my channel, Escaping Comfort Zone. If you're new here, remember to subscribe so you get all the best travel tips, tricks and advice. Um, today I'm doing something a little bit different other than my travelling side. Um, I've got some new camera equipment that I've been wanting to get for ages. So I'm going to tell you guys what I got and why I didn't get all the this fancy new gear from um, Fotokina that I've heard of that they're releasing today. So all the new Panasonics and all the new Sony's full frame mirrorless that are coming out, I've chose something totally different and I have a reason why. So I'm going to get straight into that guys after my awesome intro. So let's get into it. Woo! Right, guys, so as you probably heard, the new big event, Photokina in Germany, is actually happening today, um, very shortly actually, and they're releasing all the new products and camera equipment and that. Um, the one, the biggest names I know is the new A7S III is coming out. Um, I think they've actually delayed the time a bit though, so it's not going to be coming out in Photokina. Um, they're going to do that another time. Um, and I just saw recently that the Panasonic brought out the Panasonic Lumix SR1 and SR. There, um, I was I was kind of waiting for these cameras to come out to sort of decide of what camera I really wanted. So the Panasonic SR and SR1 look amazing. They're the new full frame mirrorless camera. Like that's what everyone's been waiting for. But there's a lot of things I still don't like about it. So, the main big priority for me in a camera is stabilization. Stabilization is a huge priority for me because when I go out and shoot videos, it can be the best video I've ever shot, but if it's shaky, I just it just doesn't look good. It does does I just don't want it. Um, and I also want awesome slow motion, like the silky smooth buttery slow motion I love it like the camera I'm shooting on right now is the 80D I've had that for a few years and this camera has been great but as I said I really want some good stabilization awesome buttery smooth slow motion and this camera lacks that so that's why I'm upgrading guys and so back to talking about the new Panasonic that just come out um, apparently this is just the model and it's going to be released in March 2019, I think. And, like, I reckon this camera will be an awesome photography camera. It's The top of the range one is 47 megapixels, and the other one is 24, I think. Um, but one thing they did, and every other single camera company does, is they put a three-axis LCD screen. Ugh, why can't you put an articulating LCD screen. That is the vlogger's dream. Everyone needs that. So that pretty much put me off straight away. And due to it being a full frame sensor, it's just way too hard for them to get great stabilization. Like I've seen the stabilization in the full frame Sony cameras and they're all right, but they're not the best. And I feel like I really need great stabilization in the camera. Um, Alright, so enough mumbling, let's get in to what I bought today. I actually just bought it like an hour ago, I'm so excited, I haven't even opened the box, so let's get it. Woo. Okay, so after hours and hours and days and weeks and months of research of what camera I wanted and what would best suit my needs, I finally made a decision and it is... The Panasonic Lumix GH5. You got this camera's been out for a while, and you guys have probably heard of it. And I've heard so many good things about it. Um, but this is this pretty much is my package. This is everything that I wanted in one camera. Um, I was sort of mixed up between this camera and the Panasonic G9 because that's the newer version Panasonic, but that was more aimed towards photography. And 
it was aimed towards photography, but it still had a lot of great video capabilities. So I was like, well, well, and it's and it was cheaper too. So I kind of tested them both out, but I found that the GH5 was just way more better to hold. It just felt better in the hand, and it was just a lot easier to navigate. Um, but one other reason I had my mind on the G9 was because it had uh, 6.5 stops of stabilization, which is like ridiculous stabilization for a camera. Um, but the GH5 has five stops, but still, five stops of stabilization is awesome. Like, it is way better. I reckon it is one of the best stabilization cameras out there. Right, hey, so let's open this bad boy. Just gotta fig it. Yeah, open it. And there she is. Oh, the Panasonic Lumix GH5. Oh. Right, I go. So, the reason I chose this camera over like the new Sony's or the new Panasonic that's out um, is for many, many reasons, and I will tell you why. Um, one of the main big reasons is this camera has an articulating screen. Boop, boop. Meaning I can flip it out, turn it around, and use it for vlogs. And that is a big plus side for me, which a lot of, which a lot of the um, new, newer cameras these days lack. So, shame on you Sony, and if the Sony A7S III doesn't have an articulating screen, then what the heck are you doing? Another great spec about this is the slow motion is just awesome. It has so many different frame rates, it can go up to 180 frames per second, and because it has such good image stabilization, that plus the frame rate, you will just have buttery smooth shots and it will look like it's you're using a gimbal. And this camera is just packed with video capabilities, like it, um, it shoots 4K 60 frames, which for me isn't that important, but it's good to have. Um, it sh also shoots up to 10 bits, which I quite don't understand yet, but it just means a really big file and it will just a lot better quality. But yeah, you can shoot 4K um, and you can also shoot 4K unlimited. So I could have this camera rolling for hours and hours on end in 4K and it won't overheat, it won't stop, it won't turn off and for me that's actually quite amazing because a lot of cameras that shoot 4K they only have like a limit of 30 minutes and this can go forever, apparently. But So that's a pretty big plus side for this camera. So the battery for this is actually really good I've heard. Um, I reckon compared to my Canon 80D it just probably about equal. Some other good settings on it is it has time lapse mode. I really wanted a camera that has a built in time lapse mode because I love taking my time lapse videos and this just makes it so simple and I can also shoot a 4K time lapse which would be great for me. A big downside to this camera though for me is it was, it's a micro four thirds sensor. So meaning if you see that, it's got a smaller sensor. Um, like it's a lot smaller, it's, this is even a smaller sensor to my Canon 80D. And being a smaller sensor means that you won't be able to get that nice shallow depth of field like as compared to a full frame sensor or the quality is just a lot better on full frame sensors but I don't know, I've researched so much into this camera and the video quality just looks amazing and even with photo, shooting photos it looks amazing so I can't personally see it, but I believe a Micro Four Thirds is good enough for me. And a big advantage for the Micro Four Thirds is, is the stabilization. So because it's such a small sensor, they, have, they fit a lot more room in the camera to stabilize it. That's why I was saying with full frame sensors, they just don't have as much space in the camera to have good steady stabilization because it's just too much packed in as it is. So another big thing for me was looking for a camera that was good in low light conditions. And I know Sony cameras these days, they're like the king for low light. And as good as they were, 
I feel like this is good enough in low light. I think I've heard this can get up to 1600 ISO until you start getting a bit of grain. But this compared to my Canon 80D, it is way better in low light. And I won't be shooting much night time. Um, so that doesn't really bother me too much. And there's just so many other things packed into this camera. Um, I actually don't know what a lot of the stuff is at the moment. They got like a 6K video setting. Um, but I'm going to do a lot of research into it. And maybe I might actually do some videos later about this camera. Um, just let me know in the description, guys. If you actually want me to keep doing camera reviews. And if you want me to do camera reviews on the GH5. Comment below and let me know what you think. Because I can definitely do that. Um, another great thing is touchscreen. This, uh, the LCD screen is touchscreen, which makes life so much easier. But there's so many joysticks on this thing, like it really, it really makes it easy to navigate around. Um, and another huge reason why I love Panasonic is because their lenses are actually so cheap. And I have my eye on two lenses, two lenses that I really wanted and. Here they are, right now actually. Ba -bam. Ba -bam. We got a 12 to 35 fixed 2.8 aperture, which is great. And a 35 to 100 2.8 aperture. So this is my kit, like I only need two lenses. I found out, I finally figured out that I do not need all these big fancy lens. I don't need like 10, I mean, I don't need like four or five lenses to suit me because every time I go traveling, it's just too much. It's, I can't fit it all in the bag and I sort of just want an all rounder lens that can shoot 2.8 aperture and this does exactly that. And look how small it is, like, it's perfect. And this also has um, built in stabilization in the lens. So this stabilization plus this stabilization equals amazing. So as I said, this lens is 12 to 35. And I'll show you right now. This is my previous lens that I used to have um, that I actually always use a lot on my Canon. This is a 10 to 18, but the aperture was, what was it again? The aperture was 4.5 to 5.6. Like, this is a great lens overall, but I just really needed it to shoot a little bit further focal length because that was because my other lens that I'm shooting on right now is the 24 to 70, and that's a heavy lens. And I found that I was swapping between this and that lens a lot of times, uh, mainly because I just wanted to zoom in just that little bit more. But this doesn't zoom in much at all to 18 mils. Um, so. That's why I love this lens because it's an all-rounder lens and I reckon I'll be using it about 80% of the time. And it's so light, so simple. And I'll go on to my other lens. This will be my main zoom lens. Say hello to the 35 to 100 millimeter, 2.8 fixed aperture, also image stabilized. Um, and the, one of the great things I love about this lens is when you zoom in, it's built in. Oh my gosh, like you can't even see it move at all because it's internal zoom. And unlike this one, which is when I zoom in, comes out. But this one just stays there. It's pretty cool, I reckon. And it's actually so light. Like, like this is only just a little bit heavier than this lens. And I reckon my lens that I'm shooting on right now, it's it's it probably be like two times heavier. And so this will make my life so much easier when traveling. Like it will light my load, and I'll actually enjoy shooting a lot more now too because it's just so simple to grab my gear and go. So there you go guys, that is my new kit that I'll be traveling with me 
for a very long time, I reckon, until they just come out with an amazing camera. But in the meantime, I reckon I'm going to have this gear for a while. So I also just thought I'd note um, that this is all just my opinion on this gear. Um, I've done a lot of studying over the months just what the best camera would be. So just take into mind, this is my, my opinion and you guys can think whatever you want. But I truly believe the Panasonic Lumix GH5 is still to this day one of the, one of the better fit, um, videography cameras. Like it is just packed full of features, it's great stabilisation, 4K, and it's, it's way ahead of its time really. Um, and until they come out with the GH6, I reckon this camera will still be great for a very long time. But let me know what you think in the comments below guys. Um, what camera do you have? What, what would you prefer? Would you go to micro four thirds over a full frame just for the stabilisation? Um, what is your idea in the ideal camera? So I really hope you guys like this video. Um, as I said, this is something totally new for me. If you guys actually did like it, um, let me know and I'll, I'll be happy to do more sort of reviewing on my camera gear, um, especially with the GH5. Um, and also before I go, I'll give you an update of my travel tips. So recently I have booked a flight to New Zealand. Um, I'm gonna be leaving January 13th, so that is when my full-time travel starts guys, so get excited for that. Uh, I'm still working up a few things, getting my camera gear together as you can see. Um, but yeah, all I can say is 2019 is going to be an awesome year for me guys, and I'm going to be pumping out these videos, hopefully once or twice a week. So. Oh yes, I'm getting excited for that and I hope you guys are too and remember please subscribe, like this video, just help me out here and remember follow your dreams, escape your comfort zone and I'll be seeing you guys on another adventure. Woo! Done!